I see the boats begin to move and they have these sails. You see, let the wind, let the wind carry you, let it chart you. The enemy cannot find a path in water. Hallelujah. Be directed by the, be directed by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit, by the power of God. Hallelujah. He'll show you the ease, the ease of glory, the ease of knowing, the ease of the Spirit. Let the, let the glory bring forth ease. I'm talking about the ease of the heavens. The ease of the heavenlies. This is what people need to do in the church. Don't look for a sermon. Hallelujah. He's already filled you with his personality and his character. So you've taken it. Now describe it. Just say what he's doing. He's doing a new thing in me and you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, ladies. It's going to take 10 or 20 years off of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a Come on, this thing is new. It is doing a new thing in every one of us. Or he wouldn't have left some of us here. So we want to be a people that's building unity, first amongst the body and out throughout the nations. And let a healing come to replace the division and the strife. Let it come into your spirit everywhere that you go. Be the healer. I try this all the time. Or let me say the right words. Let me guide these people ship into the harbor here. Let me take them somewhere. With what I say to them. So I'm at the deli. That young boy didn't want to hear me my meat. He wanted to hear more about Israel. That was the real meat that was be, being passed back and forth. He, I'm trying to walk away and he's still calling to me. He said, I'll see you again. Come and see me again. Come on. Because you've got a new hunger and thirst for God. To let something new and wonderful and exciting happen in your life that others shall want it. It's the beginning of new things. Now the next three months are going to be different. I'm just That's all I'm going to tell you about the next three months. And this is what somebody sent me on a text. Brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. Brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. Have the right brakes on your feet. Just stay in a holy place. Stay up to date with God. Stay in His presence. Amen. And tell Him, it. and I, 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 you know, I, I guess you think I'm a little foolish, but the foolishness comes down to the wise. Yeah. I, I just ask God questions that nobody else asked. I guess. But a preacher laid hands on me in our church visiting. He said, "I see you like a child growing up in your father's lap." He said, you're like a little child. <laughs> I got set up that day. I'll never forget. I thought I was going to do everything like everybody else did the church. The church was doing because his brother was teaching on the prophetic. And my son and I were the only two that he told to do something different. Out of everybody. He told us to do something different. And I, I did. I went in what the brother said. I did went like this. This is a setup. I can tell you right now. <laughs> this is a, I tried to get my courage up. This is a setup. How did this happen to me? And my son has just come to visit me. And uh, he was, he was kind of, you know, he, was, he wasn't in hot waters at that time. He wasn't that close <laughs> to the Lord. And I said, oh, God, give him faith to prophesy. Because Pastor Maiden fell under his hand. That's why I said it was a setup. And the other brother was a visiting pastor. And I said, brother, this is a setup. <laughs> I kept saying, television came. Hallelujah. And I saw he was under an open heaven. I saw that platform was so big he could ask what he wanted. And I began to prophesy. Boy, I was, was I glad that God was helping me. Listen, you won't be embarrassed. But you want to speak something into someone's life that will move them to a new level. That's what prophecy is for, yes. is to take you. It turns things yes. in the heavens, and it causes the heavens to come down yes. and pour out on you. Do you understand? Amen. And, I, and let me say this. There's a lot of people who don't want to be where you are because they're going to suffer a few things. They're going to have to do, do a few strange things, and, and they're going to suffer a little bit of embarrassment. Well, that's how you get color in your cheek. Come on. <laughs> you suffer a few things that doesn't seem comfortable to you. That's how you see the rainbow. Come on, I want the whole rainbow. I just want to look at it. I want the yay and the amen that's in between. Amen. What God says he wants to do. Amen. But don't ask him to explain the scripture or you'll be sorry. 
help me to understand it, Lord. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, you'll have an experience with God like you've never had before. And you'll be different. And he'll ask you to do strange things that you wished that he hadn't. But when you do it, that means that you come into the ways of the Lord. The ways. You know what it means to be perfect. Remember, I asked you, I'm going to try and make a trick question. <laughs> you really want to know what it means to be perfect? Be mature. I know everything. If you're going to wash dishes, do it right. If you're going to go to somebody's house and spend the night, leave the room the way you found it. Don't try to change it. I did that one day with my niece. And you know what the Lord said? Back clean your whole house. The whole house. Washed all the clothes. Took care of her children. She wasn't paying me, so I thought I could change a few things. And I did it just a little. I just moved a few things. I put a rug here and a table over there. And oh, you know, I worked hard and my muscles were a little sore. And I heard this little voice. Put everything back the way you found it. It's not yours. Come on, God wants to guide the people. We know what to do, how to do it, and it's not our way, or your way, or my way, but it's His way. He said, My ways are high. Your ways are not my ways. How many have read that? That's why we don't many times know what to do. But if you praise Him enough, you give Him what He wants when He wants it. I could say more, but I will be careful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we want to build unity. We want to honor God. We want to have, we want to, listen, have a ultimate dominion and authority. I got a call yesterday to go to Washington for the presidential inauguration. Yes. And to be at the prayer breakfast and to say something. Well, praise God. Praise God. I don't know if I'm going or not. I'm just telling you I have the invitation. I've been there for a while. And I was, and I got to thinking about what should I wear because I gave all the white my pretty clothes. Uh, I really did. I went in my closet and I gave away, I gave away the dress I was going to be buried in. I paid a lot of money for it. it was a very nice dress. I'm going to dress in the spirit if I go. Amen. Dress in the spirit. You know, these are where all the people came. Jim Baker was there and all these friends last year. But my friend picked that up from Sister Ruth. She used to do it. When she died, she started having a presidential prayer breakfast every four years. It was really quite nice. Because the rip the bill of the room and you get breakfast with it. Um, praise the Lord. Praise yeah. him, praise him, praise yeah. him. Praise He's putting up a new highway. It's called opportunity. Yes, oh, yeah. Lord. And when you're going to move into that opportunity of the Lord, and don't be afraid. He's going to tell you what to say. It's going to come easy out of you. You'll be prophesying, declaring, and sharing. And they'll be glaring and narrowing, narrowing, hallelujah. God's going to do a new thing if you want it. Yes. How many want it? How many yes. really want God to do the new thing? Yes. And don't ask him any questions. Don't try to figure it out. Move with it. Chuck Pierce was on one day. I, I didn't know it was Chuck Pierce. I just got in a new channel. A new package on a new cable. I thought, what are those people doing? Where's that stick? Oh, that? I took it out to my car. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I saw these people dancing. Right. I've never seen anything like it. They've all been over like this with sticks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, is this over somewhere in the South Seas? <laughs> <laughs> Who are these people? But they had a rhythm. Yeah. They had a rhythm in their song, they had a rhythm in their, and they were beating all kinds of instruments. And I thought, oh, they're playing for some of these nations that are out in the islands and out, you know, in the Far East, remote places. I realized it was prophetic. And suddenly, here comes this man. I thought, I should know this man, but the, dip, the beard had gotten more bigger, you know. And I always thought, oh, that's Chinese. This is his place over in Texas. Texas. Yeah. And I heard the story that he was taking care of. How many widows? Anybody remember? I don't know. Oh, it's up in the numbers. 300? Quite a few hundred. But listen to this. How you get connected with these people. Anybody ever been amazing how God has connected you? Yes. I'm in Israel. And, and this girl comes to me that I'm staying with. She was part of Ruth Heflin's ministry for years. 
And I said, how you doing? She said, well, I have some decisions I must make. I said, well, just make them. Well, I don't know. I said, well, what's the problem? Well, this is Chucky somebody. She called it Chucky somebody. I said, what country is he from? Well, he's some evangelist somewhere in America. I said, oh, you're talking about Chuck Pierce. Yeah. Yes, he needs a visa. And I don't know him. And his son needs a visa. There's about three people need a visa. And uh, I said, they want to move over here. Yeah, they want to get a little ministry on. I said, how long have you known me? He said, I don't know. I said, it's been a lifetime, 40 years. Do you trust me? And she, and she hesitated. I said, come on, I will. You love me enough. You trust me? Well, uh, I said, do you trust me or not? If you don't, I'm not sending you another nickel. That's what I said. <laughs> she said, well, yeah. I said, well, give the man the visas and don't ask me any questions. And she did. Come on. Come on, sometimes you got to be the starter there. Get yeah. behind him and yeah. give him a little push. Yeah. So she did. And I hope everybody forgives me for what I'm going to say. <laughs> so she did. And I said, I mean, I said, he's a bird in hand. God's going to bless you through this man. Hallelujah. I know that she tells him. Uh, he pays most of her rent every month. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, she, she has great favor with the government of Israel because she's lived there for 27 years. Praise, praise God. So now I know where to get a visa if I'm going to stay there. That's right. But I just saying to you, I said, give the man the visas. Do what you <laughs> need to do and don't hold on to it while you're giving it. You know, God yeah. has to always get your arms on that. So let go. Yeah. But I'm saying let go and let God. Let go and let God do what he wants to do. Amen. Let him do it differently. Amen. <laughs> Make some recommendations Recommendations to your friends. I've learned this, all of you, that it's hard to listen. I've learned this over the years, that when I was asked by my pastor or by Ruth Heffman to do something, I never, ever, 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 ever reasoned with it. Amen. Ever. I would just say, yes. when do you want me to do it? Yes. Because these people have experienced God. And if you make a mistake, let me tell you, he's got a lot of blessings to cover it up, a lot of ideas to cover it up. But I have learned. I remember one day Sister Ruth called me, you're going to meet me over in England? Sure. We'll go by away Scotland first. Well, it was next door. Well, it is, but it's a few hundred miles. Something she saw in a shop on a certain corner. It's a good thing it was in an England shop. I never found it. In a certain store on a certain shelf, and you reach around behind, she's giving me all the details where it is. I go, I can't believe you're asking me to do this. <laughs> I could hardly go next door. Come on. Hallelujah. She wanted me to go. I'm saying hallelujah because I got the victory of this. She wanted me to go down this street. She gave me the street, and the page was this long to get there, and the item was this small. I'm going to pick up, you know? I said, okay, I'll do it. Boy, I prayed, I wouldn't do it. I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. I said, Lord, you know how I am. I, I, most of the time you give me through everything, but I make mistakes. Now, if I get lost, I won't know what to do. I said, oh, Lord, please, 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 please. Well, she, she called me, and she canceled the appointment in Scott. Thank you, Jesus. But I was willing to do it. You have to be willing Amen. to let, the God, let God do the new thing, the different thing, the unusual thing. It's going to change your character, your personality. It's going to change the way you look, you go, you think. Listen, it will change your diet. It will change everything in your life. Because change always does that. It puts a new, a new anointing on your life that you don't like the old anymore. You want the new. Are you listening to me? Yeah, no. When you come into this new anointing, even the, the favorite kind of dress that you like, I'm not talking about looking old. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that there's clothes I don't like anymore that I used to like. They're just not part of it. It's old. God wants to bring you into the new thing. He said, behold, I'm going to do a new thing and show you not know it. Amen. Hallelujah. And you'll just feel like it's been slipped off of the old. has been taken off of you. You almost feel naked. You feel like you don't have any strength, in other words. You don't have anything to depend upon. You don't even know anybody. 
this has happened to me. She sent me to decorate the, the Prime Minister's advisor one day in Washington, D.C. You, you know, she said, I need some furniture, and someone had just given me three rooms of furniture. And the Lord said to them, don't give it to anybody else, give it to Ruth Carnell. I'm telling you, he's going to send you on errands that you think is God in this. It's not having a spiritual awakening. You understand that this great meeting and all these visions and these revelations, but what are you doing with the revelation? That's right. That's money in your pocket. Yeah. And she said, go to Washington, D.C. I saw the movie once, honey. I don't want to go to Washington. <laughs> And we had a mail truck that went 45 miles an hour was for our laundry and our ministry. And it ran, so I filled it up with furniture. And I drove it to Washington. And here's my hand. I didn't have one of them telephones then. I didn't have any pieces of paper other than, you know, it's on this street. It was just like an angel got behind the steering wheel. Wow. Just, I ended up with the door. I don't know how that, I didn't have visions. I just felt as good as every time I turned a corner or went down the street. And there it was. And he was an advisor to the prime minister. Yeah, but she, had, she said, I need some furniture. You know anybody has any? I said, what kind of furniture? We you know, a bedroom, a kitchen, and those things. I said, as a matter of fact, I do. She didn't have to ask anybody. Hollywood. I don't even know how we got it up the steps. It was a big bed, a big dresser, a big couch. You know what I'm saying? Well, he's a big God. Yes, yes. And we made friends. Yes. And I didn't realize that through this man, God was introducing me to Israel in a greater measure. Amen. Hallelujah. So listen, don't keep putting the brakes on things. He said, a little child will lead you. Did you know that? No. People will come and meet you. God wants to do the new thing. So he says he's going to have angels. We're going to be people who fear God and love truth. Yes. Amen. Anybody hearing me? Yes. Yes. We're going to fear God and love truth. Yes. The Bible says the truth will make you free. Make you free. You'll know it. You'll have a freedom. You won't be fearful of anyone. You'll be full of surprises every day. Glory to God. This morning when I was getting ready to leave home, I have all these patriotic songs, but I didn't know where I put them. And I had stuff everywhere. That's all I want to tell you. I'm getting rid of stuff. Where are those songs? And I reached down into this box and moved a paper. It's called Let Freedom Ring. These are patriotic songs. This little ministry sends this to me by giving. It's got all the patriotic songs. My country is me. God bless America. The stars by the way. But the spirit was moving that way. And I want to say something to all of you. Many of you have got a song over your head. You hear it in your heart. You hear it in your ears. And in that song is the direction of the Lord of what he's doing at that moment, what he's saying to you. He, said it's, he does it to me all the time. All the time. I hear the song of the Lord. It's the river in you. Everybody's got a river. Don't get frustrated. Don't search for a message. Try the spirits and see if they're of God. And out of the spirit, listen, it's been working like all day long in the night he's visiting you and been telling you all along what he wants you to deliver you're, you're the care package that he sent him because he cares amen? amen so God's raising up leaders great leaders in these days leaders to carry his message to carry his truth he's going to send you before great people I'm talking about you're great they're great <laughs> You're not any less than what you think you are. God's going to prove you and use you and do the impossible thing. But the word was quit doing the old thing and let's do the new thing. Our sister got up and began to dance with the D. I watched it. I thought, oh God. You're bringing the ease, the ease into their lives. The 
they can see the ease of the glory, the ease of how God operates. That may be one thing. Yeah. Now, listen, there's trying to put a curfew on today's Friday, tomorrow, Fourth of July. <clears throat> and you do a little celebrating in church. Cook some hot dogs outside. Go outside and wave everybody by going by your house with you. <laughs> <laughs> Give him an idea that America still lives. Hallelujah. We're going to celebrate. This is the part of our heritage and who we are. And I've been running around trying to find me some banners. So I picked up the paper last night, and there it said, Banners. And what's true value? I said, where's that? Where's your true value? Well, it's right on the way home. Hallelujah. So, and they got them 25% off. Come on, God just gives you deal after deal. You're dealing your bread to the hungry. When you move in the ways of the Lord Amen. to the very high pass, and you get to the dollar store, you can buy a little. I know you say, is this the gospel? Yeah, this is the truth this morning. Just buy you some little dollar flags and put them in the dirt down your side. If you want to. It doesn't cost you. It costs you something. Let freedom ring. Amen. Let it ring. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Talk to your neighbors. Go next door. I went next door to witness to my neighbor next door, and she was saved. I've been praying and praying and praying. I did something bad I shouldn't six years ago. Her tree kept hanging over in my yard. Every time I cut my grass, all the oranges and the leaves fell over in my yard. So I went over and asked her if she'd cut one limb down, just one. And, um, okay, six months went by, and she didn't cost me a lot to clean my yard up back then. And he kept falling, and I said, Lord, this is the truth, the whole truth. Lord, how many more times am I going to have to ask this lady? Because I've waited five years. So my associate goes out. I hope she never hears this. <laughs> she came back in the house. She said, you got to go outside and work. I said, what's happening? She said, just go ahead. I said, what's happening? She said, go ahead. I went outside and the whole tree had fallen over. Whoa. Across their front of the fence and not mine. The whole tree. I could tell you more stories like this. They're frightening stories to those that don't understand. When we hear the story about the sheep bear that grabbed the children that mocked Elisha, a lot of people would like to turn that story around. But here are people that are giving their life to God in every phase of their life. And they're doing the work of the Lord. I don't think they died. I read the history on it. They didn't die. I don't think they did. They say it consumed them. You better remember, I, I read some history on it. And they, they were mocking him. They were mocking the prophet. The Bible says, do my prophets no harm. You've got to take these things literally into our spirit. So I've been learning to, to be nicer to people. I always want to be nice. You know what I'm saying? But say it differently. And put a little more kindness on the words. Ask a little bit. And then you'll get to where that's who you are. You don't have any of that. You know, that feigning spirit inside of you. It's just not going to work and you're upset. But get that spirit. God is looking for the rule of kindness. It's going to measure a lot for you in the days to come. And what God's going to do in your life. Everybody hearing that? But you do a lot of praying. Some of you need to, I'm not saying you need to pray more, but when you pray, do it differently. Chip up and down. Hold the Bible up to God. Wave a victory sign to the Lord. So I got this plate brown tape. And I put it on all the time. It gets me awake when I get up in the morning. I turn it on loud. I sing with it. I praise the Lord with it. I'm getting visions with it. I'm having revelations with it. I'm seeking God with a greater spirit. And a heart that I want to, you know, sometimes we let our heart get cool. No, let it get on fire. Yeah. Then go down and start you a fire fire somewhere. Get full of the fire, the wisdom, the blessings, the goodness, the love. Oh, hallelujah. I got an echo chamber in my house now. I'm on one end singing, and suddenly I hear it from the other end of the house. <laughs> Glory to God. 
We're going to awaken the people on the streets. Come on, awaken the dead. They need a resurrection. Everywhere that we go, I read a story recently of a man who was dead, and he was twice dead from an accident. I mean, he was dead, dead, dead. And another preacher come riding by and said, go pray for that man in the car. He didn't know it was a friend of his. Go pray for him then. They'd already told him that he was dead. Three different people did. So he went over and he started praying for the man. And he was, he was, and he said he was singing one. Then he prayed a while and he one. He was singing, what a friend we have in Jesus. He said all of a sudden he heard a second voice <laughs> singing with him. It was a man, dead man in the car. Was singing with him, what a friend we have in Jesus. And he leaps out of the car. It's all mangled and torn up. He went running to the people there with the ambulance service. Ambulance service with the ambulance service. He said, that guy's alive over there. He said, we hear these things all the time. I'm telling you, this man's alive. So he ran to three people. This man is alive. He's alive. Finally, they went over and they felt his pulse and he was alive. Yeah. But I believe when he started to sing him with the preachers when he came alive. Oh, yeah. You know, we called on the name of the Lord. What a friend. All of our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what a privilege to carry. Everything to the Lord in prayer. Have you trials and temptations? Is there trouble everywhere? Do not be defeated. That's my encouragement. Take it to the Lord in prayer. So I decided I was going to sing that song at my funeral years ago. Then I decided I'm going for the rapture. Hallelujah. I gave away my grave clothes so I can go for the rapture. Yes. I'm serious. You do these things and you wonder. You say, is this the message I'm telling you? You're going to be so foolish and so off the wall that you don't even understand yourself. You hear, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Why in the world did I do that? Hallelujah. Because it's in the plan of God. And he doesn't come and give you a vision or a dream that he's not ready to take you somewhere. If it, with it, it's just not to thrill you. Oh, I saw this and I saw that. No, you saw the mind and the purpose of the Lord working in your life. Because he said with visions and dreams, he would speak to you. So our tickets got canceled to go to Israel. Four of them. It's about $5,000. Yeah, that means. Not for long. So I got to pray, and then I got to pray some more, then I really prayed, and then I really got up on top of my house and prayed. Now, Lord, we don't mind giving Israel the money, but we plan to go with it. Amen. And I had a dream that they called us up, I'll tell you later. It's a good dream. Have you heard from them? I had a dream they called us up. And, but only one person could go, and then another person could go. I don't know how it's going to work. But they got my money, and they, won't, they're not, they said they would give it back. But then they didn't call. And I thought, no, because God's got another plan. Mm -hmm. So I recognized it. I didn't get, didn't get worried about it. It was $5,000. Then I had another domestic ticket with the air, American Air. And they told me I could go anywhere in the next year. I said, well, suppose I don't have any plans to go anywhere. But they said they have a ticket for me. I'm just telling you, honey, you're not going to lose anything. You're going to gain everything. Everything. And I'm seeing it right now. I'm seeing the math come over the United States. I saw, just saw it come from this direction. And the water was clear, but it was washing our flag. It was coming across the red, white, and blue. I said, I didn't have any red on today. But listen, I got the blood on me. You've got the blood on me. Hallelujah. I get to know the Lord in a wonderful way, yes. in a great way, <coughs> in a usual way. The president of Poland just visited America. Now, nobody understands what's happening, but I saw it in the spirit. That's an icon. Somehow, he's a key and a mystery. In the movement of the nations, I saw it when he was standing there. I saw his spirit yielded to President Trump. His ways yielded to Trump. President Trump. Sorry? Or are you praising him? I'm praising him. Yes. He's the, he's the president of Poland. If you remember, mm -hmm. Poland was one of the first countries that Hitler invaded. Yeah. And for a long time, they, they had a difficult time getting their statehood back. But there's a great move of God going on there now. Oh, yeah. so in Romania, a great move of God. And I've been there and touched the soil and believed God. 
And that's what you do everywhere you go. He answers every yeah. prayer that yeah. you pray. Yeah. If you pray in faith in Jesus' name yeah. and you mean it, and everything that you give is a sacrifice unto you, you're giving it to the Lord. You're keeping the altars burning with the incense of the Lord. That means you're laying everything on the altar. You're not holding anything for yourself. And it's becoming up before the Lord as a sacrifice. Lord, my life is not my own, and everything I have belongs to you. I took a friend with me to Australia, and, and I didn't tell her until after we got on the plane I was going to have her to speak. And she almost fainted. She got her Bible out right away started looking. And the woman is very, very spiritual. She has a lot of visions. So she got this sermon together to give to the people there. She had it for a whole week. And she carried it all around with her. And she had it in this red notebook and red case. And it got lost the day she was to preach. She was almost hysterical. I said, just give everybody a word, your vision, vision. She was nervous. I said, don't be nervous, honey. You love the Lord. You're happy. You're excited. You've been turned inside out. You're doing next for us. Just tell them what the Lord is doing in the spirit. And she was shaking. And then she'd open her Bible up. She'd close it. And she was shaking a little bit. God was shaking the stuff out of her so that she could let that spirit flow. Amen. Now, you say, why do you say things like that? Because I've been shook. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've been shaken and shaken and shaken. I've been moved and moved and moved. I've had the Lord to take things from me you can't believe to get me where he wanted me to go. I have grandchildren. Are you looking at me? I don't get to see them. I don't hear from them. I hardly ever hear from my son, but the virus shook him up so bad he called me twice for Mother's Day. For four years, I had a message after four years. I don't see my family. I've lost almost 15 members of my family since I've been out here. This is cousins, nephews, brother-in-laws. I didn't go back home for the funeral. Why? Because my place is here. God's brought me here to minister. I'm not worried about what's back there. We're going on to know the Lord. We're going on to prove the Lord. We're moving on to see the Lord. I'm in this for heaven's best. Hallelujah. For heaven's sake. For heaven's sakes, we see that. For heaven's sakes. How many have heard people say that? For heaven's yeah. sakes. Yeah. Do it. Hallelujah. Do what God's calling you to do. Praise the Lord. And when you're determined, they'll come over and get on your ship with you and go with you. Praise you, God. I thank you, Lord. Now, there's new things happening. I've been wondering what was going to happen. I thought, well, there'll be an election. Will we get to vote? I'm telling you, things are going from side to side. This boat, how do you know what I'm saying? What, what, what is going to happen? Anybody, is anybody truly, I know we've had words previously that Trump was going to run two terms. And I'm wondering, listen, we're on the very edge. Are you listening? We're on the edge. We are on the edge. I got a lot of texts lately, and I said to Dee, I said, and she told me what her friend said. Her friend called her up and said, did you read that text? Yeah, I read it. She said, I couldn't go to sleep. I didn't want to go to bed. I didn't know what was going to happen. I said, well, tell the Lord you want to go to heaven. Hallelujah. She's going to go to heaven. But what I'm saying to you, we're hearing a lot of predictions from people, a lot of words from people. But I heard the word Goshen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's going to put you in the land of yep. Goshen. He's going to isolate you. He's going to draw a line and say, devil, this far and no further. Right. Right. In your home, in your life, in your children, in your business, right. in your income, what comes into your life? He's going to take what you think is bad and he's going to make it good. Amen. Good. He's going to make it good. Are you hearing me? Good. I believe him for a house in Israel. I said, now, Lord, I can't wait too many years longer. You know, but I'm, I've always believed that God would give me a place in Israel to live for a little while. Amen. That's my heart's desire. It's my desire to go from Israel to heaven. I don't know how God's going to do it, but it's my desire. I love Israel more than I love my next meal or anything that I have in the natural. And I'm willing to give it up, sell it, give it away. Just know that I'm going and that's where I'm going to be. When Jesus comes. You want to be there when he comes down with his feet. On the Mount of Olives, hallelujah, and it separates. And the Golden Gate is open. The story is that the Arabs sealed it up because they didn't think anybody could get through it. They didn't have big thinking, did they? So we want to be a people that thinks greater for when you're going to think greater. So a friend came to me and she she was telling me those things. I said, yeah, I've been thinking on those things. That's how I've been thinking. 
that, that money that they have of ours, God's got a timing for us to use it. He has a timing for us to go to Israel. Amen. You know, it doesn't look like it because they, they're selling all of Australia's big airlines, Qantas Airlines. Because they, they're not flying the airplanes, so they're selling them. A lot of the companies are selling them. Why? Because God is shifting everything and shaking everything that can be shaken. Amen. How many of you believe that? Things you like the most. Did you know there's two stores here? When I moved out here, I said, no, Lord, I don't barter with you. And I'm out here because you asked me to come out here. But would you... Um, could you bring a Krispy Kreme donut? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and up on 83rd, just five minutes away, they put in a Krispy Kreme. Now, the Lord let me shop there three times, and they shut it down. <laughs> I said, now, yeah. Lord, I didn't tell you that I had to have it that bad. <laughs> and so they opened it back up again for a month, and they shut it back down. I didn't say anything because I was stopping every Sunday morning and getting a breakfast sandwich at Wendy's as I'm going to church. And they closed it down because God did not want me going by that breakfast every Sunday morning. Wendy's don't know my clothes. I knew that. This is happening to me in every place. He may have just done it for me. God didn't want me getting in the habits of doing these things. You say, Sister Ruth, what are you talking about? I can tell you some things that you get a new set of hair. I'm telling you, when God loves you and he's called you and he's put his hand on you, he is jealous over you. And he watches you carefully. And when he begins, that's why he took Elisha and he took Moses. They knew a lot. And they had to be obedient to the Lord. When I read the story, I said, Lord, well, all they did was hide in a cave that he wasn't supposed to be there. When you're called to God, your steps are ordered. Yes. You must get that. When you're called to God, your timing is ordered. Amen? Amen. And when he wants you to obey him, it's as important as getting ready for heaven. Obedience is better than the sacrifice that you can know who the Lord is and worship Him. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for this day. I see God is going to give many of you great, I'm seeing this vision right now. He's going to give you, you're going to have a lot of warfare. We're all going through it, I am too. But I saw you with the victory every time. I saw these battles, but I saw the victory right behind me. Right behind me. I saw the victory. And you're going to know it's warfare. Because the battle is going to be won in the heavens. Anybody here, Pastor, maybe want to sing? Yeah, you heard it. She heard what he said. You know, he wasn't indifferent about what was happening. But he didn't see, not the greatness, but what was happening to this nation. How many of you know it's really bad? Yeah. We're not going to pull and he said to him, all I heard is when he, I mean, because I tried to talk to all of you that were in my prayer meeting before this took place. You all know that. I used to say, now what did I say? What did I say to you? Do you remember? I said, trouble is coming like you've never seen. And I don't know exactly what it is, but the Lord said, you're not going to be in this room very long. And it was two weeks later, exactly. Mm -hmm. but we had to, but it wasn't that four years before I said to D, I said, D, it's layered bad in this country. I said, people don't know how bad it is. It is really layered bad. Everywhere. It's in the church, every business, every family, on every street corner. The deception of the enemy is bad. And God showed me, and I was still wondering, how was he going to take care of it? But in a moment, it happened. In one day, after that, that God had everybody's attention. And Pastor Baden said, the Lord spoke to him, and somebody corrected me, but I'm not telling it right. He said, son, you don't understand how bad this thing is. He said, it's warfare in the heavens. He said, this is not going away. 
until someone prays for victory in the heavens. You gotta pray it that You gotta pray it in the heavens. And you have to keep on praying. And you keep on, we call it bombarding heaven. Taking hold the horns of the altar. Remember that old prayer? Yes. Declaring, decreeing, and reminding the Lord that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He says that in the scripture. And we just can't look at it and go on. And there's no distance in God. I can sit in my house and send the word around the world. Amen. I can sit in my house and declare the glory of the Lord upon the nation. Mm -hmm. But i got to keep a good account and a good relationship with the Lord. Amen. It's horrible. I'm sharing with Dee. I said, you know, we only need two things in life. Do you know what it is? A good name and good health. You got everything right there. A good name and good health. The Bible says that if we have meekness in God, we have contentment. We have contentment. You don't have to have a lot. You can just have something simple to wear and a little food. And God will bring the transportation, the means, the vision, the direction to bring the person right to your door. A man came to my door one day. He said, I'm on disability. This is recently. Who's this? I don't know how I missed it, and I kicked myself a couple of times later. He needed $50. I didn't know somebody had just put $50 under my doormat and the envelope. Mm -hmm. And I told him I didn't have the cash, but if he'd come back to Mark the same time, I'd give it to him. I realized he was in need. He said, I can't do much, but I can cut your bushes a little, or I can wake your yard. I said, do you need the money? I'll give it to you. He left and he didn't come back. And that's when I saw something sticking out in my door, And I realized somebody had left me. I realized where it was from. And it had $50 bill. That's exactly what he needed. You see how quickly he works. We don't, we don't have to go to the bank or run here or run there. He's going he's to send the right people for the right occasion. You understand? Everything. He told me one day, don't be running around looking for something. I will have in hand everything you need, and I'll show you how to use it. So we have a voice, and we have the spirit. We have the spirit of the voice. And we need at the top of our lungs. He came in yesterday, I'm just telling you this. And just as she was coming in the door, I was doing these hallelujahs, and I heard this voice echo back, hallelujah, and I went. <laughs> she was coming in the door, she heard me as I was saying. But I just went through my house, pushing the enemy back with my hands, you understand? Just do that, when you need a victory, just take, go through your house and push the enemy back. That's a sign, come on, it's a sign from God. We talk about signs and wonders. You're the sign, hallelujah. And they're going to wonder. They're going to come out to the wonder that's in you. So I go from the front of my house. Come on, then. Well, you're going back. You're going back to where you came from. Hallelujah. There's only one place left for you. But we have a lot of places that we've got to take for God. When you go down the street, many times I see people's faces that look so stressed. Yeah. Yeah. And I start praying. I'm telling you the truth. I can't tell you how many red lights I pulled up to with my friend coming from church. We're not talking about one, 10, 20, or 30. Put the window down. I got a word for the lady in the car. I got a word for the man driving the car. We leave them at the red light with their hands in the air crying out to God. We better know he's an amazing God. We went into Dillard's one day. And this girl is there with her name. And my friend began to speak into the girl's personality and gave her all the reference to what her name meant, even because she was intelligent. And then she said this, I bet there's many nice men that want a nice young man wants to marry you. First she said many, she said there's one. And she said, but he is not the man for you, don't marry him. That girl began to cry till all her mascara was on the counter. She said, who are you people? <laughs> and she was getting ready to get married, but she wasn't sure. God had us there at that right now. God wants to use you to a capacity you have to experience people. Our brother Jerry was telling us 96 people got saved one week. Because he went out with it, 96 witnessing. They got saved. Hallelujah. 17 this week. 
coming. Write their names down. Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just like everything was calm, and I said, 
It's been too much longer. There's nobody outside. And he went to the door again and gave two terrible barks. I didn't know he had that big voice on him. It was all. And I opened the door and I said, see? And he goes to the door. And you're like, <laughs> because they sense things. We come back, this was in five minutes after I got to my house. And again, he went to the door and barked terribly loud. And all of a sudden, I heard these squealing tires where a truck had backed from across the street into the end of my house. But he got back across the street before I could catch him because I had unlocked the door, take the chain off him. Well, when I first went there, I had a dream that I saw a car across the street and it had ran into my house. I had that the first month I'd lived in there. This is two and a half years later. And I remember the car had a key on it. It was one of those little Volkswagens, you know, like they put a key on the back. Well, that car was the key to this man hitting my house. You understand? And so I thought this car hit my house, tore a hole in it. I had just painted the room. Ribbon yellow. And the, car, the house is caved in. Almost got my gate, but then rocked, egged my car. And I thought, who would do this? Lord, I got some enemies around here. Who would do this? And he comes running over to help me. And then the dream came back to me. That rascal hit my house. But I didn't tell him. I thought, I'm not going to get involved. I'm going to see what the Lord He's in jail today for a long time. I had nothing to do with it. Probably did a lot of things. Now, I'm not hard. I want to see everybody say but the Bible says the law is for the unjust. Yeah. And it means if we're really unjust, it's for us also. But I've seen this happen, and God moved all those people from across the street. We're talking about about 10 houses. He moved them. All the druggies. The girl came into my prayer meeting and began to prophesy. Your neighbors are driving you crazy. And I jumped up. That's me, that's me, that's me. They're about to drive me crazy. One of the people next door, their son got murdered in the backyard of the place. All this was happening. God said, you're not going to be out of here until these people change. You know, everybody wants a nice little place and gated and all the good things, but we don't want to get into that one. We got to get involved. We had to pray. I'm praying for that man in jail. Amen. I don't often watch it because the Lord told me not to be too much in forensic science. But I love the way they discovered things that I was watching too much of. And I started praying for a lot of people that, you know, they, they incarcerated. Some of the stories were terrible. People have been killed. But I don't watch it anymore. Very often I don't watch it because I've been giving you spirit. But I prayed for these people, and I went by the prison in Dallas, Texas, one day, uh, somewhere over in Texas, and I saw a girl out in the yard raking. And I began to weep and weep as I drove by. And I knew that was intercession for that girl, not saw her need. <coughs> God's going to see your need as you look past the things. Yeah. Amen. Put your hands up, Richard. <coughs> Let's play some music. <coughs>
said, I got these problems, and believe me, she needs God's help in a big way. She really needs God's help. And we shared with her how to just know the Lord, find the Lord. And I said, give me your two hands. I said, now put everything in your hands. The struggle for you and give it to the Lord right now. Just give it to her. I said, do it. I said, throw it to the Lord. Nothing impossible with God. People everywhere. They're thinking on a lot of things because the whole world has been turned upside down. It's everywhere. You talk to people, you'd see that they're very troubled because no one knows what to do. But God has the answer as we turn to him. Listen, I've thought about this a lot. I have a house. Somebody had the dream about the money. Remember about the money? Can we tell them? This man, he's spiritual, had a dream. He said he went to the bank. I'll try to fill in as much as I can. He went to the bank. But it was like the top was blown off the bank and all the money was running out of the bank. And he wanted some change. I mean, it's not in the right order. But it's... He wanted some change and they said, there's no more change. We've gotten rid of the coins. And they're getting rid of the $5 bills and the $1 bills. So we go to the bank yesterday and there was a sign there and said you could only buy ten dollars worth of quarters at the time or change at the time. Wells Fargo was shut down because they didn't have any help. I guess, you know, a lot of people were sick. They didn't have enough help to open the bank. Can you imagine? Would you ever imagine your kids? But I felt with what money I had if I had any bills to pay, everything on. Except my house. I need a windfall for that. God will do it. Amen. He'll do it. Because if they change the current season, suddenly he'll, they'll force you to try to take the mark. That's how they're going to do it. I, I can see it all unfolding. But I know God's given us time to win souls. He's given us time to turn this country around. He's given us time to do what he's called us to do. But be ready. Don't think about something that you want or you're going to do. Don't think about you need the money. I want to tell you, God's got it all. He's got it all, folks. He's got everything you need, everything you could possibly want, and he'll supply your every need, and he'll get you there. Amen? Amen. I ministered to a brother that works at the Pentagon for years before I ever moved out here. And somehow he followed me out here, and he got my number, and he would ask me what the Lord was doing. And we'd talk every once in a while, not often. And he called me up one day. He said, would you like to go somewhere? I said, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go to Israel. He said, all right, um, I'm going to get you a ticket. You want to take me show? Take it, take me show with you. And he's given us, he's given me six first class tickets. I mean, that's nice. I don't get used to it. We've been to Australia first class twice. We've been to Europe, South America, South Africa. We've been to those far trips for the one. They keep you your own salt and pepper shake. Your own salad dresses and little bottles. And as soon as you're seated, you know, they treat you like you're royal. The Lord said to Ruth Heflin one day, Nice is nice. That was all he said to her. She got an apartment in Nice wow. and had one there for years. Wow. Learn to hear the Lord in little ways, yeah. short ways. Yeah. Let God bring great victories and marvelous things out to you. Right here, and marvelous. Yeah. What I'm saying to you, there's many miracles moving, we don't see them. Yeah. There's a lot of exploits, it's all in the air, and God wants us to reach out and grab the unusual. Yeah. How many want to do that? Grab the unusual. Praise your name, Jesus. Come and heal us, Lord. Let's sing that again, Richard. The gentle shepherd, come and lead us. Gentle Savior, shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us, for we need your strength. 
straight.